how is Power Slap worth $750 million? That's what we're going to find out starting right now. And we're going to begin with a clip of Dana White claiming that Power Slap will be bigger than the UFC. In the early days, I said, this will be the biggest sport in the world. This will be bigger than the UFC. Dana. This will be bigger than the UFC. Now you can remember I said that. Everybody will be like, oh, not, and you know, all that. And I'll see you in a few years. Okay, so he not only states that Power Slap will be bigger than the UFC, he says it will become the biggest sport in the world. So what is his basis for this proclamation? Well, Dana White frequently likes to cite to the social media numbers of Power Slap. And when we look at them, to Dana's credit, they do look really impressive. So on YouTube, Power Slap has 3.1 million subscribers. TikTok, 4.9 million followers. Facebook, 5.4 million. Instagram, 5.1 million. And then curiously, Twitter is not nearly as impressive. There are 55 Point one thousand followers on Twitter. And we'll get to more on that in a moment. But when we look at some of the individual posts, again, we see impressive numbers. So on this slide, I have a screenshot of a, a reel posted on Facebook just one week before I made this presentation. And it has over 50,000 likes, 1.8 thousand comments, 899 shares. A video from Instagram posted just two weeks ago has 79,000 likes, 1,908 comments. And then we also have a TikTok video that is pinned and it's been, it's been up for well over a year. Uh, but this video has over 357 million views, 8 million likes, 47.5 thousand comments, and 377 thousand shares. So very impressive numbers. And then of course on YouTube, we see many videos that are successful with a lot of views. Here's one with 1.8 million views and it's posted four months ago. It's got 9.8 thousand likes. And then curiously, it is hashtagged with WWE. And we'll get to more on this in uh, later on in the presentation. But just the point here is that there are some great early indicators, especially in light of the fact that Power Slap is still very new, and these are encouraging signs. So today we're going to talk about where the value of Power Slap comes from, um, Power Slap being canceled by TBS, the social media drop-off, how much is 10 billion views worth, turning $3 million into $750 million, the UFC subsidizing Power Slap, the backlash to Power Slap, and how Power Slap hits $1 billion in valuation. Let's get start, started with the value. So to answer this question, how much is Power Slap worth? We need to answer, how does Power Slap actually make money? So there are three primary ways in which Power Slap could make money. Um, one, by productizing Power Slap and making it into a pay-per-view. Two, with ticket sales. And or three, with advertising and sponsorship money. Now, it appears that advertising revenue is the primary revenue stream at this time, because right now there are no pay-per-views. You can watch Power Slap for free on Rumble. Um, now, there could be money generated through ticket sales, uh, but we'll get to ticket sales more later on. But for now, just know that the primary monetization route is going to be through advertising. But with advertising, the advertisers and the sponsors must get an ROI from their advertising dollar or else they will pull back their sponsorships and or they will just decrease the amount of money that they are paying out. So here is where PowerSlap is going to derive its value from. This is what makes it worth whatever it's worth. Dana White claims that it's worth $750 million right now. We're going to talk about that. So the, the first notable event is a fail, failure on the part of Power Slap because here we had a real world test on network TV and it just didn't work out. Here we have a headline from MMA Fighting, Dana White's Power Slap will not return to TBS for season two. And in a snippet from the article, it reads, the reality show and competition series debuted on TBS after White started the organization in 2022 due to the vast number of views slap fighting received on social media. So the important part here is we need to turn a corner. Dana White needs to be able to monetize this into real money. He has to turn power slap into actual dollars to make it worth, in this case, what Dana White is claiming as of recently is $750 million. So is it actually worth $750 million? or and or will it ever be worth $750 million? Here we have another headline, this time from MMA Media, or the MMA Mania, and it reads, Dana White's Power Slap League booted from TBS after one season. And then we get some quotes from Dana White, and I'm going to read through a few of them. It says, there was, there was a lot of criticism about the TV ratings, and this is Dana White speaking. And then he continues, people are, and then he continues, what do any of these people know about TV ratings, number one? And like I told you, the thing averaged 375,000 viewers on TBS with zero advertising from the network, zero. We held 50% of the AEW All Elite Wrestling audience. So two points right here. One, this number is inflated, at least as I'm reading it. Now, it depends on maybe there's a change of context. But when I look at the numbers reported, they do not match up with averaging 375,000 viewers. Also, when he states zero advertising from the network, this reminds me of when people are pitching on, pitching on Shark Tank and they say that we, we didn't advertise or we didn't use any social media. That's not really anything in favor 
for you, right? The fact that you didn't do something doesn't make me think, okay, well, let me just enhance your value that much more. Um, so that really is a, a weak point on Dana's part. And then he continues on and he talks about Kyrie Irving uh, going to the Dallas Mavericks and the Mavericks playing the Clippers. That broadcast had 575,000 viewers and Dana says that we did 317,000 at the exact same time and that they were on ESPN, we were on TBS. So we were number two with men on all of television. They were number one and it looks like he's speaking to one particular episode. But and when he talks about this audience, there is a targeted demographic of males. I think it's 19 through 47, but that's what he's getting at there. The last quote here is, that's an incredible number, especially when this thing skews younger and none of these people watch TV, he concluded. These kids don't watch TV. None of them, they watch on their phones or, or the computer. So here he's defending the viewership. This last point leads me to the question, then why did you go on network TV? This was the big test for Power Slap or the initial big test for Power Slap, and it was a failure. But maybe Power Slap can bounce back by going solely online, going away from network TV. And on this next slide, I have the actual numbers. So we have week one, 295,000 viewers on TBS, week two, 413, and that was the peak. Week three, 284, week four, 275, 275, week six, 309,000, week seven, 270,000. And then for the season finale, week eight, 220 thousand viewers and for week eight that was the number 106 that was the 106th rated tv show for that night and then here we see that the top for power slap uh, among other tv programs was number 30 for their night and that was in week two um, so really here tepid results with the viewership and not good enough to for tbs to bring power slap on for week two so this was really important because this is where power slap was going to be able to show that it's not just social media people are really interested in this and it's going to carry forward and it just didn't on network tv but maybe it would on Rumble, which is where Dana White took Power Slap to next. So we have a graphic showing the very low results on TBS, nothing, uh, no episodes eclipsed, uh, 500,000 viewers. But when we went to Rumble, for the Power Slap 1 event, we see that it almost reached 3.5 million viewers, which is a stark contrast to the 220,000 viewers uh, that were on week eight. So one question I'd have here is how are we measuring viewership? Uh, what constitutes a viewer? Uh, this is a really stark contrast and it just makes me wonder how are we measuring this? Uh, but either way, you know, that's a, it's a great turnaround for Power Slap. Uh, but then on the Power Slap 2 event on Rumble, uh, the viewership goes down to 2 million, just below 2 million. And then we, we see it uh, falling down to about the 1 million mark for the next three events. And then Power Slap 6 shows up at above 2.5 million views on Rumble. So a nice turnaround, even though we had this lagging in the middle, still very much more encouraging than the original results on TBS. Uh, but again, I would like to know the, the, the fundamentals here. What are we measuring? Is it the exact same measurements across TBS and Rumble? Uh, but either way, this graphic comes courtesy of the Sports Journal. And then we have, uh, it's actually the Sports Journal use sponsorly ticks. Um, so nice graphic, and it does help illustrate the growth on Rumble, or at least the increase in viewership on Rumble. Um, and then I have social media drop off. So uh, not just the Rumble numbers, but when we look at social media, some of the numbers don't add up. And when we look at some of the videos, some of them have very high views and engagement rates. And then other comparable videos have low numbers and they just don't have the engagement rates. And so it'd be interesting to audit the different social media accounts and see what is causing some of the discrepancies or some of the, some of the times where the numbers just seem slightly off. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. We have two videos that were posted on TikTok and they're almost identical in thumbnails. One thumbnail is where a contestants or maybe not a contestants, um, I don't know what to call them, a slapper. One of the slappers, uh, the competitors, he's got his face being slapped and his face is really showing, uh, it's being contorted based on the slap. And then the second video has basically the same thing, just a, like a continuation of that. And one video has 368,000 views and the other has nearly 35,000 views. So that's, that's over 10X the views for basically the same thumbnail. And what's interesting is the video that has 368,000 views, it was actually posted most recently. So it was only 20 hours before I was making the slide that that video with the most views was posted. And then the video with only 35,000 views, it was posted three days ago. And it only has four comments and 646 likes. The video that was posted most recently has 27 comments and 3,868 likes. Likes. So this most recent video, it could have just been more promoted, uh, but this just illustrates my point that some of the numbers just don't sync well. On this next slide, I have two posts that were added to Facebook four days ago. Um, and again, four days before I was making this slide. Um, and these posts have two comments each. One has eight shares and the other has six shares. Keep in mind that the Power Slap Facebook account has 5.4 million followers. This reach, this engagement does not match up with an account with 5.4 followers. It just doesn't. And then so here again, we have on Twitter, remember the Power Slap Twitter has 55,000 followers, uh, over 55,000 followers. 
And we have one post that has a clip of a knockout and it has two comments, four retweets, 25 likes and 1.9 thousand views. And this was posted on October 19th. Um, so that was uh, two, three days before I made the slide. And then four days before I made the slide, we have another post where it's we got two clips that are alongside a card and we have this matchup of the champ and the legend. And this appears to be the main event for Power Slap. I think it's nine. And it, there's, a, there's a vote and it says who you got. And then it's the Hawaiian versus Dumpling. And there were only 101 votes cast and there are 14 hours left to cast your vote. So again, and on, on the second post, you have no comments, two retweets, six likes and 1.4 thousand views. So again, just like where is the organic engagement? How come the floor on these posts is so low? And then here, um, what's not promoted as much but exists is a subreddit for Power Slap. And there's really one user that is making the most posts and they appear to be promoting different posts off social media. And so here we have a screenshot showing the Power Slap subreddit. Um, and the latest post is from two days ago. I don't know his name, but one of the contestants in the main event eating a sandwich and it has 25 upvotes and seven comments. Uh, and this subreddit only has 5.3 thousand members and it was originally created on November 11th, 2022. So again, you know, some of the numbers, this is kind of inconsistent because we have this, these huge followings on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, but it's just not translating into other online experiences. So again, maybe the Power Slap subreddit just isn't something that's promoted a lot, uh, whereas the social media accounts are, but again, these are inconsistencies that we'd want to see why are they inconsistent when valuing the company. So one other point here, and I'm going to go ahead and tab to the Power Slap, um, Power Slap on Rumble, and Rumble is the home of Power Slap. This is where you can actually watch the events and what's impressive is that we can see that the numbers for these videos, as we're looking at all of the videos, just the most recent ones posted, I don't see anything below 600,000 views. And I'm scrolling, I'm on row three now. Um, oh, there's one that was posted that just has 66.7 thousand views. But otherwise we're at 600,000 plus, oh, here's one that's 530,000 views. But when we look, we just see videos that are from uh, more recently, 16 days ago, 23 days ago, one month ago, two months ago, and the views are consistently high. Although three months ago, we can see some views at 66,000, 69,000, 45,000. Okay, so here we have a drop off, which again makes me wonder how do we have such a surge uh, from you know when we have these other videos? So we have 898,000, 871, 750, and then when we go backwards in time, we just see and the, the view counts are lower. And then we come across one video where there's 1.87 million views. So again, it's just, you know, some of these views, it's just like, how is this, how, why are they so different? Why is there this drop off here? And it's not that views can't drop off. Some videos perform much better than others, which makes complete sense. Um, but now just having gone through Rumble and looked through some of the views, let's go to the YouTube, uh, the, the power slap on YouTube. And when we look at some of the views, here we have one video, the latest video posted two days ago with 81,000 views. And then a video posted three days ago with 16,000 views, a behind the slap documentary with 5.5 thousand views. Uh, we have a short, of a minute and 16 seconds with 20,000 views. Uh, another video posted six days ago with 66,000 views. We don't go that high until we get to one video that was posted two weeks ago with 225,000 views. I'm looking further, you know, another video posted two weeks ago with 113,000 views. Uh, we have a video with 89,000, 176,000, 178,000. So my point here is that when we look at YouTube and Rumble, despite the fact that YouTube is a much, much larger platform, the views just aren't coming through on YouTube. Now, granted, you know, Power Slap is promoting Rumble. Rumble is now the home of Power Slap. So this is where they are funneling everybody to go to and watch their events. How come the views aren't more, they, they, they aren't more in sync across YouTube and, and Rumble? If anything, I would think, despite the fact that Power Slap is so heavily promoting Rumble, I would think YouTube would still have the most views. Okay, so let's actually, this, this gets at a video that I watched that was very interesting. It's from ITP MMA Live. And we're going to go ahead and play a minute clip from this video. Power Slap is buying followers on Instagram. I mean, the simple fact that the Power Slap Instagram page, which has 5 million followers, is generating as many new followers as it is on a daily basis immediately makes me raise my eyebrows. Over the last two weeks, Power Slap has averaged 5.8k followers a day, which is an absurdly high amount given the size of their page. Compare this to the UFC Instagram, which has 43 million total followers and has averaged about 5.1k new followers every day for the last two weeks. Or you can compare this to the MLS, whose Instagram is much closer to Power Slap's at 4.6 million followers and is averaging just 700 followers a day. Now, you might be saying that nobody watches the MLS 
MLS, but at the same time, who's watching Power Slap? I have friends who watch the MLS. I've never met a single person in the real world who's ever seen Power Slap. So where are these 5.8K daily followers coming from? Now let's talk about the Power Slap YouTube channel because besides their sus as fuck Instagram, I'm pretty sure that they're also buying YouTube views as well. This video is the Slap's most viewed video with 5.1 million views and it has 15,000 likes. And just doing some quick math, that makes the like to view ratio 0.3%, which is genuinely abysmal. Compare that to this video from the NHL that also has 5.1 million views, but has more than double the likes at 32,000, which puts it at 0.6%. This is actually still really bad, but the fact that it's twice as good as 0.3% says a lot about Power Slap's video. I found that- Okay, so he continues on, and this is a, a really interesting video. I will link to it in the description. But the point here is that there are some numbers where we look at them and we're like, how do we reconcile these differences between the various social media accounts? Let's talk about the views. And I, I have here 10 billion views because I, I've heard Dana throw out 8 billion views and I went ahead and just took this to 10 billion. Um, how much is this actually worth? They can vary wildly in how much they're worth based on several factors. So one factor would be whether the view is for a short or a long form video. Another, another factor is the duration of the view. Did someone watch and immediately click off or did they stay watching for minutes? Also, the content, whatever the content is, is it sports content? Is it financial content? That's going to affect how much a view is worth. The audience and the audience's location matters. And then also the niche. So, so what is the niche this is in? And this is in sports. So the point here is that 10 billion views is going to vary wildly based on any number of factors. But when we look at 1 million views, so carrying that forward, when we look at 1 million views, this can be worth $100 or it might be worth 20,000 or even more. It just depends on the quality of the view and how much we're able to monetize. Again, this gets at the point where Dana White is trying to turn the corner and monetize all of this social media success into actual dollars. So how do we do this and how much is it going to be worth? Well, there is a metric called cost per impression. Here I have CPM and a really good cost per impression is $15. And let's just say we have a, a billion views and our CPM is $15, which is quite high. And especially for something like Power Slap, I believe it's very high, but even at that, then we would get at the CPM for 1 billion views is $15 million. And if we had 10 billion views, so we're taking all of the views across shorts, no matter how long someone viewed it, uh, viewed a piece of content, if we have 10 billion views, that's $150 billion. That is still very far removed. In fact, that is only 20% of $750 million. Now that's the valuation, right? And of course, we're not just going to look at the annual income. We're going to um, calculate that forward and have a multiple. But my point is, even if we are looking at this in a very favorable light, and even if we had 10 billion views, it's still going to be very, very hard for, ever, for us to ever have this turning point where Power Slap is worth $750 million. And this next slide just illustrates my point. So here we have a snippet from a VidIQ article, and it has revenue for 1 million YouTube shorts views. And it says, if you know anything about shorts revenue, then you know it's a lot lower than other types of content. And it says for November 4th through 21st, we only made $95.29 after getting 1 million views. That's an RPM. And I think that's revenue per uh, a million, a thousand impressions of one of nine cents per thousand views, which is quite low. And so here we have the screenshot showing $95.29. At this rate, you need 100 million views to bring in 10,000 views or $10,000. And the reason why I include this is because Power Slap really is a short type of content. You watch the slap. And that's about it. You watch someone get slapped. Maybe they fall down and get knocked out. Maybe they smile, whatever the case. It's not something where you're going to watch on and on. Maybe if you're um, going to the live event or, or you're watching the video for the live event, maybe you are watching for several minutes at a time, but this content really is tailored to shorts and shorts just aren't that uh, profitable. And then, so on this next slide, we have a, a, a Twitter post that was posted by uh, Jed Goodman. And he wrote, Mr. Beast created a website view stats where you can see subs, views and revenue estimates using figures from this site. Here are the revenue estimates for the last 28 days uh, of a, com a few combat sports related YouTube channels. And then we see power slap at number one, which is good, right? But the estimate here is 10,000 to $31,000 in revenue generated for the last 28 days. That's really insignificant. Um, and then I found out about this through MMA guru. And the reason why I bring in MMA guru is because he's second on this list and he seems to go along with the numbers. So here the estimate is 9.1 thousand to 25 thousand dollars for Guru. And MMA Guru commented, I'm beating ESPN MMA on revenue based on advertisement views along with the rest of the corporate MMA media from my bedroom in my underwear with 30 times less social media presence, all starting from nothing and no name value. So I, I include this because he's going along with these estimates, which means they, they aren't too far off. Now he didn't say the, the revenue estimate was exactly right, but he's really corroborating this, this revenue estimate and going along with it. So even if it's a little bit off, it's not that far off. If it was that far off, then presumably we'd have a comment stating that it's, it's really far off. But again, here, power slap, 
estimated at $10,000 to $31,000 in revenue for the last 28 days. But even if that's off, even if PowerSlap is making way more than that, let's just say it's $100,000 per 28 days. That's $1.3 million a year. And this is from, you know, this is saying from YouTube, but it's actually showing Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Facebook's not included in that, but still, we're just, I'm not seeing where PowerSlap is worth so much money. So where is the money coming from? Well, on this next slide, we have a graphic showing sponsorship money and Munster Energy making up the bulk of this at, it looks like about $15 million for Munster a year. And again, this is from the Sports Journal and um, they're, they're using a graphic from Sponsorly Ticks. So when we look at this chart, we see that um, a few other sponsors are at 2 million and then the rest are at below, it looks like 500,000 or below. Um, so in the aggregate, this adds up to $36 million in sponsorships. And the initial buy-in was likely based on Dana White's uh, presence and his just ability to bring in sponsors and get them excited about this new type of sporting event. So let's now talk about turning $3 million into $750 million, which Dana White makes mention of on the Pete and Sebastian show. And we're going to go ahead and fast forward to four minutes and 30 seconds in. And, you know, the original guys, the Fertitta brothers, were my partners in the UFC. We sold in 2016 to Endeavor. So my go-to guys, I said, hey, I got another idea. You guys want to do this? And uh, they're like, uh, yeah, we're in. So I said, we all got to pony up a million bucks each and get this thing started. That was 13 months ago. It's a $750 million business. Okay, so one guy was uh, just in disbelief and put his hands over his face. Uh, but here we have Dana really saying that he was able to turn a $3 million investment into $750 million in, I think he said, 13 months. And outside of crypto, which this would even be spectacular for crypto, but there's really no way to get this type of return. Because in essence, what he's saying is, hey, we've taken this social media trend and we've productized it. And now we have made it worth, we've, we've turned it into a $750 billion business. Not saying that he's making that much in revenue, but that the business is now worth this much. Okay, so the problem with that is, actually there are there's a few things wrong with that, but let's go ahead and break this down before we continue. $1 million each from three partners, that was 13 months ago, and now we have the $750 million business. And I'm going to get to the problem with that in one moment, but here we have a snippet from an article by Kevin Ioli, and, it, and we have a quote from Dana White that says, think about this, numbers don't lie. This has all been done in 13 months, 13 fucking months. I mean, think about it, just 13 months, it's nothing. And look where we are. This thing is already a massive fucking success. Now, how do you measure success? Well, there are several ways to do it. There's financially, and this thing is off the fucking charts financially. You can measure it with numbers and viewership. This thing, this blows everything out of the fucking water. And if you look at the growth over the last 13 months, it's unbelievable. And the article continues that PowerSlap already has a valuation of 650 million. And White said at a PowerSlap 6 post-event news conference that there have already been numerous offers to purchase the company. And it's not expected to be long before the company reaches a billion dollar valuation. One note here is I did look at Dana White's Power Slap 6 post event press conference, and I didn't see any mention of him saying there were numerous offers to purchase the company. I wasn't able to locate the article or clip where he said that, uh, but I believe he said that. But the point here is that we have Dana White really promoting the success of Power Slap, but we don't see, I'm not seeing anything tangible. He said it's blowing everything off the charts financially, and he says you can measure it with numbers and viewership. Where are the actual numbers? Like show us the numbers that say that this is, these views are turning into dollars because that's really what we need to see to know that we have a $750 million business. So what do we actually have here? We have a new and unproven sporting event. It's an entertainment product, a roster of slappers with little to no star value. Any star value that they have is because of the promotion that has been done by PowerSlap. We have the production. So it's a nice production of the PowerSlap event. And we have these social media channels. But other than that, I don't really see anything tangible that we have here to say, hey, this is $750 million. Um, we can keep going with this and growing it, but this is what the work business is worth today. So when I was talking about, it's not really 3 million, turning 3 million into $750 million. One of the reasons I was talking about that is because of the subsidization. I previewed this a little bit with the hashtag WWE. So they're hashtagging WWE, but that's not really subsidizing it. Uh, but what we do have, and I don't know, maybe the WWE is promoting it. I did see something that alluded to that. I don't know that because I only focused on the UFC for this presentation. But the UFC is subsidizing power slap. So when we talk about 3 million, it's not about turning 3 million into 750 million. It's more about $3 million plus all of your networking, plus all of your contacts, plus all of your available real online real estate, really. Because the UFC is constantly promoting power slap really to the UFC's detriment. And I'll talk about more about the detriment in a second. But the ad dollars and the value of being able to promote directly from the UFC's social media accounts has to be accounted for. And there is potential for bundling the UFC together with PowerSlap. And we'll talk more about that in just a few slides. But here we have a screenshot from UFC.com 
where we have, I don't know if this was technically a press release, but we have the UFC, we have UFC.com promoting Power Slap. And the title here is, or the headline is Power Slap 9 to make international debut this October during Abu Dhabi showdown week in 2024. Note Abu Dhabi. And then we have the UFC account, account uh, YouTube account with 18.9 million subscribers, UFC's YouTube account promoting a Dana White post-match press conference for Power Slap 7. So again, and here we have the hashtag Power Slap 7. This is coming from the UFC account. Um, Power Slap doesn't get this promotion otherwise. So it's not just 3 million. Here we see a lot of other value being infused into Power Slap that otherwise would not be there. And then when I talk about to the UFC's detriment, here we have an illustration of this. Islam Makachev, we have a headline from MMA Mania. Islam Makachev, unhappy with lack of UFC 284 promotion, more could have been done. So when your team is promoting Power Slap, that means that they are not doing something else for the UFC that they could be doing. And here we see this evidence because UFC's 284 promotion was criticized. And then we have a snippet from this article that states, meanwhile, UFC's social media account has been all in on White's Power Slap League. In fact, MMA reporter Mike Bond noticed that out of 50 of the 50 most recent posts on UFC's Twitter, only one was focused on UFC 284. Power Slap had nine. The top two videos are for Power Slap. We see the Power Slap contestants walking up on stage. So again, here, the UFC is promoting Power Slap. And even though they're still promoting the UFC, it's not solely the UFC, and it's somewhat diluting the UFC content. And so here, I just have another screenshot from Instagram that shows yet another promotion of Power Slap, where we have two videos of six, and these two videos are for Power Slap. So they're promoting the Power Slap event. And here we have one Power Slapper interacting with Max Holloway. And I don't know this guy's name, uh, but the point is, again, Power Slap is being promoted through the UFC. So the UFC really is subsidizing Power Slap with advertising dollars that they would not otherwise have. Um, and then one of the videos is just from someone getting slapped. So then we, when we look at YouTube, the YouTube promotion wasn't nearly as strong, but I did come across some Power Slap videos in the YouTube, uh, the UFC's YouTube channel. And so here we just have uh, two different examples of this, where we have a one Power Slap video amongst other UFC videos, and then another Power Slap video uh, promoting the, I think it's October 24th, not October 8th event. But the point here again is that the UFC is using its valuable real estate uh, to promote Power Slap, and they're somewhat diluting their own brand. And then here we have the UFC reposting on their Twitter account, the Power Slap events. This was just a, a, a post, a retweet from 22 hours ago where the UFC is promoting Power Slap. And then here we have another example of this from 15 hours before I made the slide where UFC is promoting Power Slap. Well, what, what do I mean by that? Well, then here we have a, a headline from MMA Mania again, and it reads Mass Exodus, MMA fans dumping UFC social media channels over stupid, quote unquote, stupid Power Slap promotion. So if, if fans are leaving UFC social media channels because of Power Slap, then there we have a dilution. So a snippet from the article reads, in fact, Instagram users are unfollowing the channel in mass because the promotion appears to be more concerned with saving its dwindling Power Slap audience than hyping up UFC 284. Um, and a complaint similar to the one levied by one of its headliners just last week. And I think that's in reference to Islam Makachev. Here's a, a sample of the latest grievances. This is uh, people commenting on Instagram. Unfollow the UFC, fuck this shit, promote the second fight in history between pound for pound number one and number two after John Jones and DC, not this slap nonsense. Stop promoting this expletive and not giving the spotlight to UFC 284 Islam versus Volk. We got number one and number two pound for pound fighting and he promoting slap league that no one want to see. Unfollow the UFC. And then when we look at Reddit, we can find more people complaining about the promotion of power slap. Here we have a headline from two years ago. Why are UFC fans being exposed to so much power slap promo? It's really whack that the UFC is force feeding it down the, U the throats of UFC fans when it's a different promotion and quote unquote sport. And then another comment on this thread reads, I've had to unfollow the official UFC account on Facebook because I'm just sick of seeing it. Sucks because they'll post good clips every now and then of fights, but I just don't give a fuck about slap slap. Here's another post on Reddit and it reads, this shit is embarrassing. And then we have uh, the UFC's account on, I think this is YouTube and we see a number of videos and just the videos are almost all for power slap. So more power slap promotion on the UFC's account. This is not free to do this. I don't even know how much the UFC would charge for it to, to have another type of uh, sporting event promoted on their own channels. So it's not just $3 million that's invested. The UFC is subsidizing a lot of the value by really leading people and, and promoting Power Slap over and over again. Here we have some more Reddit comments. This is on a thread from a year ago. Um, and someone wrote, this legit made me unfollow the UFC channel. So much garbage posted lately, mostly just use it for the weigh-in show. Anyways, I don't know why they are using the same channels. It's kind of ruining, they wrote running, but I think they meant ruining the UFC brand now. 
Another person wrote, I hope somebody from Endeavor will stop this madness. I, I understand why Dana does it. He owns one, but on, only works for the other. But somebody needs to step in and tell him to chill out with the aggressive promotion on UFC's social media. Build your own brand. And so that's something we'd have to look at if, if we're valuing this company. Does the constant promotion on the UFC social media channels continue? If it stops, does this, does this valuation still stand? So it's not just a $3 million investment. Dana White and the other investors are really leveraging the UFC and the UFC's brand. And as I talked about, to the detriment, because you see people are complaining about this and people haven't followed the UFC on social media. One last comment, uh, because if they make their own, very few people would subscribe. They are hoping to piggyback off of existing viewers to the UFC subscribers and capture a few there. Inevitably, a few people will watch a few videos and become viewers. Downside is that you're also losing UFC subscribers, but that seems like, they, like a risk they are willing to take. But there's one note here, and that the UFC is actually partnered with this in some way. And I say this because when I went to the press release on UFC.com for PowerSlap, uh, we see an information section. And it says, PowerSlap was founded by Dana White, Lorenzo Fertitta, and Craig, uh, I think it's Polygian, in partnership with Ultimate Fighting Championship. So there we see the UFC is complicit with this. It's not like Dana White just has done this without permission. It says, in partnership with the Ultimate Fighting Championship. So presumably, that means that the UFC and its investors are on board with this and promoting PowerSlap. So what I also noticed is that of the last power slap events, we've seen a bundling together of sorts with the UFC. So what happens is the power slap event will precede the UFC event. So there's there's some advantage there um, and really an advantage to power slap because it's not as expensive to hold these events in different places because the UFC is also there. Now, that's not to say that power slap is there at the UFC venue, but it's maybe it's in the same city. It's been in the same city. So it's been an, an easy way for someone to go and then attend Power Slap potentially and, and then attend the UFC event. But, but we do see this tethering or this connection with Power Slap and the UFC beyond just the promotion. So Power Slap 7 was on April 12th. UFC 300 was on April 13th. Power Slap 8, June 28th. UFC 303 uh, was on June 29th. And then Power Slap 9 is on October 24th. So that's going to be tomorrow. And then UFC 308 will be on October 26th. What I'm seeing is that this connection, I think, is going to lead towards a bundling of sorts. It at least opens that possibility. This is where we have a bundling subsidization. So when we talk about this, it's, it's like we have the UFC, you get the UFC, but then Power Slap comes with it. So we, we, we hold the power slap value at our fixed value, even if it's not necessarily the value that power slap has in reality. But if we bundle it together, then for someone to get the UFC, which is desirable, right, to get, let's say, the event for the UFC, to get the rights to have a UFC event in the city, then you also have to take on power slap with it. And that, so that's why I mentioned Abu Dhabi is because my theory is that the power slap might be accompanying the UFC. And then to get the UFC, you not only pay the UFC the, the amount it costs to get in and bring the UFC in, but you're also paying for the ascribed value to power slap. And this can also apply to advertising. So if you are going to advertise with the UFC, then you also have to advertise on power slap or, you know, that's part of the deal. And otherwise it doesn't really make financial sense not to advertise on power slap. And this might also go forward to live events, pay-per-view rights. So the, the idea here, again, is that you pay full price for the UFC access, and then there's the premium for the value of Power Slap that is being tacked on and really uh, not merged with the UFC, but it just becomes an additional upsell when you buy the UFC. So this is how I think Power Slap ultimately generates revenue, because when I'm looking at the social media, when I'm looking at the actual foundation of what Power Slap is, I'm not seeing this $750 million business. And by the way, so for this upcoming event, I, I went and I looked at the Ticketmaster for uh, the event, and there weren't very many seats that were taken for the Power Slap event. In fact, here we show that the majority of these side angle seats are just not taken. You know, there are some blues that are um, taken or reserved, uh, but for the most part, these tickets aren't selling. Another thing I'm going to look at as I'm trying to put a value on Power Slap. And then for the health aspect, I'm not going to get into it because I think this is obvious. Brain damage is an obvious consequence here. If you have someone who is being slapped um, and there, there's no defense and there's no marking it, they're being slapped head on, uh, then you're obviously going to suffer from that. Um, and then I think from this, uh, you know, when, when you're working around the health aspects, you can have false analogies and equivalencies. So for example, stating that, you know, someone being slapped four times is much better than someone being in a boxing match and being hit 400 times. When, you know, in a boxing match, we have glancing blows. There just aren't that many direct hits, especially to the face. So um, that's one thing to consider here. And then another is, you know, the constant improvement angle. We've heard this from the NFL. We're working on it. We're in the process. We're always looking to get better. We're using better technology. But meanwhile, the band plays on. So the takeaways here are who is narrating the story? Right now, it is Dana White that is narrating the story. And it's a fabulous success. 
But when Dana White talks, one of the things that I'm paying attention to is he doesn't really get into specifics. Now, sometimes he will name specific numbers, uh, but other times he won't. And even when he does name numbers, it makes me want to look at the numbers and, and, decide, and, and look at the value that those numbers represent. So when we look at the one TikTok with 370, 357 million views, it's like, how, but how much does that actually make? Have you actually monetized that video? What is it pulling in? What is the brand value there? We want to get out of the generalities and look into the, into the specifics and to the details. And views are a form of currency, but they are not a currency because a currency is stable. Views are instable. We need to be able to assess what these views are worth. And right now we can't do that with PowerSlap. You know, we're looking at blended views because there are shorts, there are long form. Um, and are the views able to be monetized? Um, it's just not going to be a one-to-one -one with views because, and that just gets that to what my point is, there's not a currency here. So we need to know what is this actually worth to be able to assess and take away the actual value of PowerSlap. And then, then we get at the hypothetical value ads. So this has been um, a strategy uh, that has been uh, used for quite some time. It's where you have a purported value and you make that value, you, you try to present that value to the consumer and hope that they buy. Um, and in this case, I think we'll, we'll, what we will see is a bundling of PowerSlap together with the UFC. And then the, there's this purported value that you're really taking on. You don't know if it's there, or maybe you know that it's not there, but you're going to go ahead and pay for that premium because the UFC is so desirable. So I think that's what we'll see. We will see PowerSlap be uh, coupled together with the UFC when it comes to selling. And I talked about the, uh, the advertising, the events, et cetera. We will see the, these two coupled together going forward. And that's what I think will happen. Um, so what do we have in front of us? This is ultimately, we want to know what is, what is it exactly that we are looking at? No marketing, no hype. What is this actually?